Hello, welcome to my watercolour painting channel. Today I'm going to be painting a scarab beetle and I'm going to be using iridescent paints. I started off using the Arteza ones in the gouache set. So this layer I'm putting on now is the gouache. I soon switch to the Schmincke iridescent paints, which are on the right hand side of me there. You can just see the pink there. Uh, because they're much more much more vibrant colours, much more iridescence in them, and they're just much nicer. I found the Arteza ones to be rather flat, but I can use them in other things. So I'm just using the purple, and I'm just putting down one layer at the moment. Now I build this up in several layers, I think about four or five by the end, maybe even more. So currently this is rather a flat layer. Now I've done the drawing with um, ink tense pencils. Now I'm popping a little bit of green in there. I think this is now from the Schmincke set. And I've changed to a round brush. I switch between the little flat one and the round one throughout the painting. That's me still using the Arteza by the looks of it. And now I'm coming in with some darker areas to give a bit of form to the beetle. I'm spreading it out with a, a damp brush. So by going around the edges with the darker colour and then blending the edges, it begins to give a little bit of form to the shape. But I'll do this many times throughout this painting. I quite like with watercolours building up several layers. And so I continue on this way with layer two, building up a little bit of form and increasing the depth of the colours. Now this is layer three and I continue to do the same. More depth. The Arteza gouache set I'm using is part of the 60 tube set. There were 12, I believe, um, metallic colours in that set. Now here I've realised I haven't drawn out the mandible or the antenna. So I'm just drawing those in now. I'm going to go over the pencil line with the Inktense pencils as well. And here I am with the Inktense pencil. I'm just using a dark purple colour. Inktense pencils I really like for watercolour drawing because they slightly melt into the painting as you go and it softens the edge a bit. And now I can come in and add some paint to these. And this is just adding a bit of the purple. I think this is layer four now. I've lost count already. And I'm still working with the Arteza gouache mostly. And now I'm intensifying the green. Now this is where I am using the Schmincke, Schmincke, sorry, um, 
iridescent colours. And this is when I realised how much more intense they are than the Arteza ones. And now I'm adding some more highlights on the body. The shell of the beetle has that almost oil on water effect where the colours are um, almost neon. And so I'm now bringing in some of these vibrant colours to suggest this. I'm softening the edges there. It's kind of useful to have, I wish I'd done this actually, to have two paintbrushes, one more or less just damp and the other one for using the paint. Because what I was doing in this process was I was putting a little bit of paint on my brush, then I was wiping it off on a cloth and then spilling it out in water. That's a waste of paint. So I suggest using two brushes for this technique. spreading out the colours further and now I'm coming in to, I think this is layer five now, to add some more depth throughout the painting. So with some darker colours and now I am more or less using the Schmincke paint now. And this is the purple, which I've mixed up using the magenta, um, a warm blue and some Payne's grey. I'm adding some of the pink from the Arteza paint pot, but um, it, I end up covering it up with the magenta anyway in the end. I do enjoy painting insects. They are, they are so interesting when you look at them close up. And the reason why I'm doing the scarab beetle is because on my other channel, which is an art journaling type of channel, um, I was taking part in a um, challenge with a group of people from Australia. And one of the themes was either medieval or Egypt. And of course, on my mind, I immediately went to the scarab beetle and I wanted to do an ancient Egypt theme just so I could paint a scarab. <laughs> I do love insects. I'm trying to use this Arteza pink, but it's very flat. It's very flat. And uh, I realise it later on and I do come in with magenta on top. And in a way that works really well. There are some interesting highlights here and there on the body. I'm just going around doing that now. I'm adding some blue and I'm adding some green. I even add some gold. But I don't think we've got there yet. Now I'm doing some more darkening. I think we're on layer six or seven by now. <laughs> So I'm continuing to create some depth now with some highlights and some darker areas. To really begin to do, um, take shape. I'm sorry I've gone a little bit off screen here. I kept on doing that throughout this video. So I must apologize for that. So I'm working all over now with a darker colour and reinforcing some of the existing colours that are down as well. Coming in with a bit more of the green, giving it more depth. And really coming in with the dark now. It does dry a lot lighter, the iridescent colour. 
So it takes a bit of work to get the dark darks in, to be honest. This is why I had to build up in layers. Particularly towards the end. I'm sorry, that's so much off screen. There we go. That's a bit better. <laughs> right. So now I'm going in again. <laughs> Layer number 100. <laughs> oh dear. Some more dark because I was struggling to get the depth of colour. And now putting in some more of the green. It seems very dark at the moment, but it does dry lighter. So here is the iridescent effect. You can see on the pale pink, it's not shimmering. That's because it's the Arteza Garage. So I need to come in and go over that with the magenta, which I do. And now I'm just doing some more depth in some of the darker areas. And now these highlight colors that happens with this type of shell. Some blue catches of light here and there. There are even some little gold bits that I'm popping in there. Little bits here and there, some on the antenna and some on the lower abdomen. And this colour doesn't show up very well on camera. A little bit round the edge there as well. Now I'm mixing some of the magenta with some of the, there's um, a creamy colour. Uh, these are all the Shaminka, but I'm using the Arteza palette at this moment. So I need that bit of space. You'll see why in a minute. So what I'm now doing is I'm dipping a natural sponge, one of the finer ones, in this magenta, this pink magenta colour that I've mixed up. And now I'm dabbing it on to create some texture. And I do that a couple of times. I've got quite a light pink there now. A nice light iridescent pink and I'm using this natural sponge again, going over. Just create a little bit of texture and hide some of the brush strokes and to blend things together optically. And that's looking a lot better now. Now you can see the shimmer. I'm really pleased with how that came out. That's really glistening beautifully. Love it. So I hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you did, leave me a like. And if you're new to this channel, please subscribe. I'll, I try to do something watercolour related every week. Thank you very much for watching. Bye.